Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, this mill has been working really well, but it's got a piece of all thread for a drawbar. So we're gonna make a new drawbar today. The Wells Index does their drawbars a little bit different. Let me show you what kind of clued me in. I noticed the uh, top of the drawbar was threaded, and not the top, the top of the uh, spline is threaded. I thought, wow, wonder why that's threaded. So I contacted uh, Wells Index and they sent me a picture of the way that's supposed to be made. Here's the Wells Index drawbar setup. They've got a like a one inch cylinder here and this goes up inside it. And this is a brass washer right there that pushes up against the threaded portion. And this is threaded inside and that threads on the top of the spline. Uh, but this portion sticking out of the top can't be any bigger than 3 eighths because it started out as half. So I want to see if I can't do something a little bit different. So here's what I'm going to make. This piece here is like a piece of three quarter stock. The hole in the bottom, that'll be threaded for the top of the spline. And this is a uh, socket cut in. This is a cutaway view. And that this piece is this piece, green. Slides inside that and I'll weld it in. That's in a large portion on the draw bar and that's a brass washer right there. Similar to the brass washer right there. Anyway, I don't know if that's confusing or not, but that's what we're going to make. And we're going to weld that cap on so it'll be self-contained. Won't be able to maintain it, but hopefully there'll be no maintenance to it and it's not that hard to make if, if it does fail at some point. Okay, I've got a piece of one inch stock in my chuck. And the first thing we're going to make is the uh, top of the draw bar nut, the part that welds in. It'll go into the very top of it. I'm going to drill a hole all the way through this piece. I think it's about three inches long. But the whole device will have that hole going through it at least half inch, no matter what, anyway. Okay, I've got a half inch hole all the way through it. And we're going to make this uh, top cap portion. And I want to make it about 3 eighths deep. Really not critical on the settings, on the dimensions. I want to make this 7 eighths. That means I need to take a 16th off of each side. So I'm going to go in 62,000. I'm using a GTN2 insert. It cuts both laterally and uh, looks like a cut off and grooving tool, but it, it goes laterally too. good for t uh, turning a tight shoulder to something. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to use my spring cutoff tool and cut that off now. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I've got to fit this piece into there. It's 3 8 deep and it's 7 8 in diameter. Uh, so I'm going to go in about 300 thousandths and then square it off with the boring bar. Bring it to the size of the boring bar. Well, I said that wrong. This needs to go in 3 quarter inch, so I'm going to go 700 thousandths. Lost track of how many turns on the tailstock. Ah, 650, perfect. Hope I didn't go too far. Perfect. Could have been a little smaller, but that's that's good. A little, a little deeper, right at the very bottom. I so just square in the bottom up. I hope I left enough length to do this. I think I did. Okay, this needs to go to uh, 703 thousandths, which is the internal thread size. This is going to be kind of tricky. It's the internal thread size of that spindle over there. I think it was three quarter deep, but I'm going to go measure again. Oh, it's a half inch, half inch deep, <clears throat> half inch deep. So I need to go. Five eighths of an inch deep there, with a boring bar probably. I'm not sure it bore. That one won't fit. Wonder how close a drill will get. Eleven sixteenths will get darn close, and I've got an eleven sixteenths. Okay. Need to go by six hundred thousandths. Okay, we're actually fairly close with that drill size. We need to go about ten thousandths more though. I want this to be fairly accurate because I want to be able to judge the thread depth. Seven oh two and a half. That's exactly where it needs to be. Okay, now we need to do some internal threading, and it's twenty threads per inch. So twenty threads per inch, right there. The side. Two speed clutch on the side needs to go out. That's already out. Out. And this lever on top needs to be to the left.
perfect. I got that compound set at the wrong angle. I need to be 29 and a half going the other direction. I can either put it over here or over here. I prefer it over here. It works either way though. The only problem with that is setting the angle exactly right. It's probably easier just to go this way. Okay, I'm set at 29 and a half, the opposite way. What I need to do is go in as far as I can and set a depth stop. But you can't ever use auto feed and a depth stop, especially the half nut, because nothing will give. But that depth stop, I'll leave loose, carriage stop, and I'll, it'll make me able to judge when I'm at the bottom. There's the bottom right there. Kind of tricky doing this into a blind hole. Okay, this is 10 threads per inch, or 20 rather, so I can throw the threading dial in anywhere. On any mark, that is. It's hard to know. I hate to take it out of there because it's really difficult to get it back in there exactly right. Okay, this is not ideal, but it may not work. It's all the way in and touching the carriage right there. As long as our vice grips stay put, I should be able to put that back in the three drive truck exactly in the same place. Well, it tried to start. Okay, that is really risky, but let's see what it does. Worst thing that can happen is it'll destroy our threads. Whew, still too tight. Hard to know how much the threads on this are boogered up. I, I took a, a threading file to it, but they're a little bit boogered up still. I'm going to go one or two more passes on this and we'll just say it's good. This is it no matter what. 
Those are not the best threads I've ever cut. Yeah, I got a scrap of something I had in my scrap bin. It's got a 7 16 hole in it. I just drilled that. And I'm going to cut off like a quarter inch washer. This is one inch stock. Dropped it anyway. Okay, here's the way it works. This goes in here like that. This goes on here. It gets welded around the perimeter there. It's held captive in there. And then I pin a or weld a nut onto the top of that. I was going to put a brass thrust thrust washer in there. Gonna have to be fairly thin, either that or cut this down. I think I'll just make a thin brass thrust washer. Okay, here's what we got. Threads on that end. Brass washer right there. It's kind of snug on there. Piece fits on here. And then I'll weld a hex nut onto the top of that. And I'm going to tack weld this around here. 
hopefully it won't melt that brass inside. If, if, if it does, we're <laughs> that's it. We're, it's over. Game over. Well, let's give this thing a try. Probably should have put a couple of flats on that for a wrench. It's going on there fairly easy, a little snug toward the end, but there are some boogered up threads there. Well, that's good. About right at a half inch of thread engagement. There's where it's Okay, there's a good tight collet. Make sure it goes down in the hole. No problem. Let's see what this does. See if it breaks it loose. Probably would have been good to have a flange underneath that nut. Okay, that, it's loose. Now it's going to break the collet loose. Oh yeah! No hammering. None whatsoever. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm not saying one call it's better than another, but there is a difference. This is a brown and sharp, and this number nine, and this is a uh, R8. And that significantly sharp taper compared to the brown and sharp makes makes the R8 eject easier. When I was using a hammer to eject these collets, it took a lot of force to break them loose. But on the flip side, these have a gentle taper which will have more mechanical advantage to holding a, a mill tight. It just sticks tighter in, in the 
uh, spindle also. But with that uh, threaded rod, it ejects it no problem. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Thanks for joining me, and be sure and subscribe. And wait just a minute. That's not very good. I don't like that. Let's do something better. All right, I think that's more like it. Locked in place. All it's loose, drawbar's loose. All it's loose. Note to self, don't leave that on there. <laughs> like kind of like a chuck key, don't leave it on there. Call it locked down. Call it unlocked. Call it ejected. Call it, call it removed. I like it. Well, that about wraps it up for real this time. Uh, thanks for joining me and be sure and subscribe and uh, ring that bell.